All right, folks, if you are someone who is looking to buy their first gaming PC, or maybe you're on the fence about buying a gaming PC and you're just a little bit overwhelmed by the whole thing, today's video is going to simplify the whole process. And speaking of gaming PCs, big thanks to Newegg and Velstorm for sponsoring today's video. If you're not already familiar with Velstorm, picture a room full of PC building experts. They are based right here in the US, building all kinds of custom gaming PCs with off the shelf quality parts to fit a wide range of budgets. They actually have a store on newegg.com and I'm gonna link to that down below for you. And as you can see, they've got options that fit virtually every budget. And with every single Velstorm PC, you get lifetime support. So if you ever have a question about your PC or something doesn't seem quite right, you don't have to rely on Reddit. So when you're buying your first pre-built gaming PC, the first thing you should understand is that there are largely two types of places that sell pre-builds. OEMs and system integrators. OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturers, and these are companies that actually manufacture many of their own parts, and the whole PC is designed to work together. These are companies like Apple, Dell, HP, Lenovo, and, and so forth. It's not that these are bad builds to buy. Many of them are great builds, but when it comes to PC gaming, I always suggest buying from a system integrator. These are individuals or companies that are building custom PCs with off the shelf parts. Examples include iBuyPower, CyberPower PC, NZXT, and of course, Velstorm. You're basically getting the same PC that you would have got building it yourself, but instead you had some other experts build it for you and then they ship it to your house. Just as easy as someone pop those parts into a motherboard before shipping it to you, you can pop them out and swap out the parts. It's a great way to get familiar with PC building without having to build the PC from scratch at the start. Now, speaking of getting familiar, for those who are super new to buying a PC, let's quickly go over the main parts that you're gonna wanna pay attention to when you are buying a PC. First, you've got the motherboard. This is the massive board that everything plugs into, and it's the way that all of your PC parts are able to speak to each other. You're sometimes gonna see this abbreviated as MOBO online. Then you've got the CPU, which stands for Central Processing Unit, and this is the brains of the PC as it handles all of the instructions it receives either from the software or other parts inside the PC. Naturally, this the CPU gets pretty darn hot because it's working nonstop. So to prevent overheating, you'll see a CPU cooler on top of it. And there's a ton of cooling methods, whether it be something as simple as a fan or fancier options like water cooling. For me, I just want the thing to keep cool. So the fan most of the time does a great job. And personally, I don't care to spend more money on fancier cooling solutions if I don't have to. Assuming you're buying the PC from a reputable company, they're gonna make sure that whatever cooling's installed is gonna do the job for that particular PC. Then you've got the graphics card, commonly referred to as the GPU. This is the very important part for gaming as this is the thing that renders all of those fancy images and animations. The other big thing that you're gonna wanna pay attention to is the RAM, which stands for random access memory. Common sizes of these are 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, 64 gigabytes, and so forth. These sticks are the easiest things to upgrade as they just pop in and pop out. They store all the PC's short-term memory. And the more multitasking you plan on doing on your PC, the more RAM you're gonna want. For long-term memory, that's where we have storage. And there's three main types of storage that you're gonna see. Usually for gaming PCs, you'll see at least one SSD, which stands for solid state drive. Generally speaking, the M.2 SSDs are the fastest and they are super slim. Then you've got the 2.5 inch SSDs. These are a little bulkier and often a little cheaper, but still really fast and great for gaming. Then you've got hard drives, which you're gonna see abbreviated as HDD. And these are physically bigger and slower than SSDs. So why would anyone buy them? The big advantage is that since they are cheaper, you can generally get a lot more storage for the price. So for example, let's say uh, $100 would get you a one terabyte SSD. That same $100 might get you a four terabyte hard drive. 
The catch is that the initial load up times on a hard drive take longer than they do on an SSD. So you'll just wanna make sure that your gaming PC has at least one SSD storage before adding a hard drive to it since the SSD is where you're gonna want your OS, your software, primary games, all that installed there. Basically anything that you want to load up quickly, put on an SSD. And we'll talk more about storage numbers in a minute, but more often than not, the storage that comes on most of these uh, gaming PCs you're gonna see online, they're gonna be using SSD. The other things you'll see are of course the case and the power supply. And I won't talk much about that because when you're buying a pre-build, it's, it's like the power supply, it's not something you're gonna have a lot of control over. And assuming the company who is selling the PC knows what they're doing, they're not gonna be using a power supply that can't power that PC. So you're gonna be in good hands there. We'll touch more on that in a little bit, but the key things you're gonna be looking at when you're buying a pre-built gaming PC are the very specs that the game developers list on their system requirements. And this is really the crucial first question you'll be asking when you're buying a PC. What games am I going to be playing on this PC? For example, if I know that I'm gonna be playing a lot of Call of Duty, I'll want to search something like Call of Duty system requirements. And you can do this with any title. And they all largely use the same format where they will have minimum, recommended, and then even higher levels like competitive and ultra in this case always go with at least the recommended specs. That's your baseline right there, what you're gonna start with. You know at this point that whatever PC you buy should at least meet these requirements. Also keep in mind that these recommendations are often assuming that you're going to be playing in 1080p. They're motivated to have those specs look as low as possible. I've got a great video that outlines everything you need to know about buying a monitor and the reasons you would go for certain resolutions. But for the sake of time in this video, I'm just gonna say that you're gonna wanna aim for a 1440p experience, which means more pixels to fill, which means more resources that will be used up on your computer, which means you're gonna wanna bump up the recommended specs just a little bit. For example, when it comes to RAM, 16 gigabytes really should be your minimum for a good gaming experience. 32 gigabyte sets, are they're getting cheaper. I'm seeing a lot more of those in builds, which is great but definitely don't get less than 16 gigabytes. And if you do get 16 gigabytes, you're gonna have a great experience. But honestly, the best thing you can do is just search the name of the games that you're wanting to play along with you know, system requirements or specs and even the resolution you're wanting to play in and just see what other people are suggesting in places like Reddit that will give you a really good baseline of what specs you should be aiming for when you are shopping for a pre-build. Make sure you also pay attention to the size of the games that you're going to play. For example, Call of Duty lists 175 gigabytes for the install size. So if my gaming PC comes with 500 gigabytes, and let's say between Windows and a bunch of other software, I'm already using 100 gigabytes. That means that once I install this one game, I'm already at like 300 gigabytes. So while 500 gigabytes is like my personal minimum that I would say to people, I would say aim for at least one terabyte. And if you don't know what a terabyte is, one terabyte equals a thousand gigabytes. So it's twice the size of a 500 gigabyte drive. But let's say there is a PC that's just a crazy good deal, but it only has 500 gigabytes. Storage is really easy and really affordable to add on down the road. So don't sweat too much about storage because again, it's not that hard to add more as you need it down the road. The thing that gets most people really intimidated about buying a PC or building them is the CPU and GPU. And that's because these parts generally just have these long numbers for their names. It feels like nonsense. And often the bigger number does not necessarily mean it's better. For example, an RTX 4050 graphics card, it's not as good as an RTX 3090 graphics card. Luckily, there are a ton of great lists out there that rank these parts for you, and I'm gonna have those linked down below. So rather than try to memorize which parts are better than others, just take the GPU and the CPU that's listed on these system requirements for the games you're looking at, find them on whatever list you're looking at, and don't buy a PC that uses a part that ranks lower than the baseline. Again, I'm oversimplifying things here, but just 
knowing that and having those resources down below to compare parts and everything, it's gonna save you a ton of headaches. Another thing to ask yourself when buying a pre-built PC is what else will I be using this PC for other than gaming? Gaming PCs in general are pretty powerful and they're gonna do a pretty good job handling most non-gaming tasks, but certain intensive applications like video editing, for example, should have some consideration. Again, do some searches for system requirements and recommendations for the software that you're gonna be using, along with the type of footage you'll be editing. Editing 4K files is gonna require more power than editing 1080p files. And software like Adobe Premiere generally needs more CPU power compared to something like DaVinci Resolve, which needs more GPU power. Another thing to ask is, are you wanting to stream your gameplay while you're on Twitch or YouTube or whatever? If so, that's more demand that's gonna be placed on your PC, especially your CPU. So you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna ensure that you have a beefier CPU than what's just listed for that particular game. Probably the biggest consideration you're gonna wanna make is your budget. Ultimately, you can only buy what you can afford, but maybe you're in a place where you don't even know what to expect to pay for a gaming PC. Now I'm gonna speak very broadly here, but generally gaming PCs run from $500, which would be considered super budget, to like $4,000, some even costing more. However, most people end up spending somewhere in the ballpark of $1,000 to $2,500 USD, which is generally the sweet spot because often, not always, the more expensive a gaming PC is, the higher the diminishing returns are. A $3,500 PC may certainly be better than a $2,500 PC, but is it $1,000 better? In my opinion, usually not, but I'm also a very budget focused shopper on this kind of stuff. Now, this video is not meant to cover every single nerdy detail of buying a PC. I do not consider myself a PC building expert. Do I build my own PCs and, and play video games all the time? Sure, but if you're looking for great resources to follow on this particular kind of stuff, uh, there's a lot of great folks out there with really good in-depth information that can give that to you at a level that idiots like me can understand. Consider following guys like Braythorn, who I think really excels with pre-build stuff, or Zax Tech Turf, or Scattervault. They tend to do a lot more custom PC build stuff, but what this video is meant to do is take something that for a lot of people is very intimidating and make it a little less intimidating. With every gaming PC, you are buying a starting point. You're not married to those parts for life. So even if it turns out that you could have just gotten a little bit more speed had you bought this other PC, you can always sell and swap out parts. And over time, you basically learn without realizing it, how to build a PC. So I'm here to tell you, relax, have fun. And to make your life a little bit easier, I'll go ahead and link to some of my favorite builds from Velstorm right now, and you can either snag those deals right now, or you can at least use those lists as you know baseline specs for what you should be looking for based on your needs. And if you are in need of a new monitor to pair with that new PC, save yourself a lot of time and money by using the free price comparison tool that I built for gamers just like you, and you can use it over at techaudit TV. I'll have a link to that down below as well. And if you do need help understanding which monitor your PC should be paired with, this guide right here should do a pretty good job at helping you out. Enjoy.